I'm actually trying to split the screen. Do you know how to do that? No. Take no more. <laughs> and you, you know about digitizing. <laughs> <laughs> I digitize, I digitize money, boss. I don't digitize yeah. uh, screens. <laughs> You know what, anyways, you know what, let's, let's just go with this. Me, I adapt. Um, anyways, let us begin. I don't want to take too much of your time. I know it's the evening. Uh, thanks again for joining me on this podcast show. And yeah, man, I really appreciate your time. And as I said before, you can just be vulnerable. And we just I have a few questions for you just around route to market, especially the informal markets, because uh, I feel yeah. like this is a big area that uh, we should actually speak about. Uh, and that a lot of people would actually benefit from knowing about as well. Mm. But before we begin, uh, <laughs> can you actually briefly tell us about yourself, you know, um, and what you do? And is this what the seven-year-old uh, Richard, Charlie, envisioned he would be doing today? <laughs> oh, hell no. <laughs> Definitely not. <laughs> My parents wanted to me wanted me to be a lawyer because I talk a lot. I was like, nah, I don't think I'll do that. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, man, I think I'm a I'm a I'm a young boy, a colored dude, but I'm the colored who chose the black side. You know, coloreds we we choose a side. So uh, <laughs> I I chose the black side. Um, from a small town in the Northern Cape in Kimberley. Mm-hmm. Came to Joburg, typical Jimmy comes to Joburg, you know, I studied in Pretoria, um, was here for a while and then started a, a degree on communication. So my idea was gonna be this guy who was gonna be on TV and communicating and having press conferences. Mm. And now I'm selling stock into a spaza. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but it's quite interesting. I mean, so I think once I've always been in this environment. I mean, I grew up in three spaces down my road, connected to the people. Um, so it's quite interesting in terms of where I landed as a person. Mm. from it's all, your, your background and the experiences that you go through always ends you to where you were, you know. So I had a stint in West Africa for a while. I had, uh, I was doing warehousing uh, for, for a spa, North Rand, was a warehousing night shift operator running mm. our managing day. Um, I did a stint in sales, and it's amazing how things come together at the end. You're like, okay, wow, okay, so, so maybe maybe that didn't work out, <laughs> but this is what. <laughs> and just just out of interest, I know you said your parents wanted you to be um, a lawyer, but I mean, what did seven year old uh, Richard wanna be at the time? Rich, eh? Just rich, just. You money. wanted the money. <laughs> I wanted the money. <laughs> we were staying in a in, in a one room, one room literally. You know, we would tell you there was a curtain dividing the room and the and the kitchen. Mm. So all I thought is like, hey, I want money, so help, you know. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> okay, no cool, man. Um, so let's let's get straight into it. You know, um, I mean, you're a route to market specialist, uh, and you've mentioned that you grew up obviously around Spaza's route to market. So I mean, you have a leg to stand on. You have the expertise and the experience of dealing with uh, the informal markets, as we call it. You know, so for me, first of all, like how my first question around this is: How big is the informal market? Uh, just from the top of your head, I know you probably might not have the stats, you know. Number one in SA, and uh, number mm-hmm. two, if you know, how big is it in Africa? And sorry, and before and before we actually go into that, like, um, so we can just be clear to the listeners, right? Um, can you actually, can we clarify what is the informal market and then go into how big it is? Yeah, so the informal market is everything that is not government regulated. Right. So um, you 
from the spaza owner to the mama on the street to the lady who is selling um, maguena at the taxi rank. Mm -hmm. um, so anything that, and, and, and what quite interesting in South Africa with now with COVID, that Utito Boeni and the government is trying to regulate that, right? So even mm -hmm. your taxi owners, that's an informal market because they can't trace it. They don't know where it is. Um, there, there's no tax number. There's no VAT mm -hmm. number. Um, so that's your informal market. Um, but the contribution, and somehow they are able to still say this is a GDP contribution, right? So mm -hmm. in South Africa, um, informal market contributes about 46 billion towards the GDP, right? Wow. And this is huge numbers. Just, I mean, out of interest. Out of interest, the um, faces like the multi market. Mm. The multi market is a huge market in South Africa, um, and that's not even just South Africa. I mean, as Africa, you know, multi is uh, is top of our minds. Yeah, <laughs> um, for various reasons. Yeah, <laughs> for various for various for various reasons, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but, but but I mean, in 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 South Africa, the multi market is like. Is estimated between three and six billion rand just just on Umut, mm. right? Um, and if you go to places like Nigeria, so in South Africa, contribution of of the informal market is about uh, 20, 30 percent of the country. But in places like like Nigeria, it is even much bigger because it's embraced by the government. And I think mm. here's a country we still far off that. Um, Metro police or whatever would raid the lady in the street and take her stuff away. And we've seen mm. red stories of guys being raided at the street corner and they're just trying to make a living. Where countries like Ghana, uh, Kenya, Nigeria, there is huge, huge, the government understands that this is a contributor to, 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 to GDP and just jobs. So I think um, it is... It is a huge market, and I think even we haven't even reached the tip of it. Um, if you think of food in this in this in the informal market, how, how most of us have bought maybe Maguena, or you've bought a packet of chips on the side of the road, especially when we we're growing up, going to school. Um, there was a lady in front of your school during break that would sell you those things. Mm. And she, put, <clears throat> she probably, I mean, the stories where she's put through someone through school. My mom had a, her informal market, she was selling, um, in Africans, they call it ice. You know ice, where you use yeah, to suck. We, we call it, yeah. like, like it's flavored ice, right? Yes, it's like flavored yes, ice, yeah. right? So that's, that's, that's what paid my school fees. My school fees was, was 80 Rand back in the day and was huge money. <laughs> and, what paid my school fees was my mom selling those ice things out mm. of the house. Just like go buy some oros, put it together and sell it. Um, so we, we we haven't even touched the, the I don't know if it says 46, that's the contribution, 46 billion. Um, in other countries like in Nigeria, Kenya, where it's much more stronger, it's a much bigger number. Yeah. So, interesting. So, just just on that. So, versus the formal markets, which is obviously regulated as you've described by government, etc. Um, how big is it uh, from a percentage point of view? Is it like forty percent of the entire market? Like, do you have any figures around that? Oh, so what is Pazla contribution towards or the formal market? No, so, the formal, yeah. So, yeah, formal yeah. versus informal. Yeah. So. I mean, so to say, if you look at, I think Nielsen um, has done 46 billion, right, of GDP. Mm -hmm. So that's probably about, two, yeah, between, between 10, 20 percent. Um, whereas the formal market, and that's now your blue chip companies, your syntax. Um, mm -hmm. um, and then, I mean, that's the discussion now around South Africa. If syntax is such a huge contributor to GDP, 
<laughs> why are we not selling cigarettes? Right? <laughs> alcohol, yeah. Why, why, are we, why are we not selling alcohol? <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. Because that's where your biggest, biggest contributor is. So I think um, the formal market is probably about 80, 80% of this. I think okay. the alcohol industry, when I was still working for beer at the time, was close to probably about 700 billion contribution mm. to GDP at the time. Um, so that's how big, just from an alcohol oh, perspective, wow. right? Um, so it's tiny in comparison to the formal market. Mm -hmm. But what I always find interesting is when we talk around, for instance, um, unemployment, right? They'll give you an um, unemployment number in the formal market. So they'll tell you unemployment is 15% or 20%, right? And this is based on people leaving varsity. Um, but you never really follow that maybe that guy opened the car wash, mm. right? That, that's not being put in there. He's employing people. He could have bought himself a wild machine and is, has his own barbershop. Um, mm. Umama sitting at the corner and is taken over uh, by her daughter or son that's also now selling Maguena that gives them 4,000, 5,000 rand a week, right? Um, there is property, the property market within this, within the township, within the informal market is huge mm. uh, because uh, the Spaza guy. Is, is, a, is a foreigner, he comes in, he needs a place to sell, he rents the garage, that's property. Umama mm. builds in the back of her house, she builds three, four rooms, and she rents that out. That's property. But when you say unemployment, you take the formal number, yeah. they don't even understand how much other employment is happening. It is happening. So it's quite, and that's why I say we haven't really looked at it from a from a holistic perspective in South Africa. Mm. That, that is like, true. Yeah, that that is very interesting because when I was also doing my research just on Africa unemployment, you know, because uh, I mean it's such a big issue here in South Africa. I think it was around twenty nine percent when I was doing it. But when you look at the Africa unemployment number. I mean, it's actually less than 10%. If I remember correctly, it's between 4 and 6%. And I'm yeah. thinking that actually the government is actually counting the employment in the yes. informal markets, which South Africa seems not to be doing. Correct. Um, which could be a conspiracy maybe from the media to obviously, it's a political game yeah. maybe, I don't know, you know. Yeah, uh, no, yeah. <laughs> which is very interesting to me because I'm like, surely Africa would have a high number. But I mean, you, you mentioned a good point that we... Would not actually come to the informal market, which actually segues into my another question. You mentioned that, like in Ghana and Nigeria, they've embraced the informal market, right? Um, why do you think South Africa has not embraced this when you have Metro Cups uh, kicking people off the street just trying to make a living? Um, I remember there was a whole article about a guy selling intro, like a, a cow's yeah. head, and the minister yeah. got involved. Can you just tell me, I mean, from, from your experience and your views, why do you think that is the case? So, so look, if you go back to the history of Spaza, right? So, um, or, or, or not even Spaza, or just the informal market, is apartheid was done in such a way that you were not allowed to go into the formal market. <clears throat> you couldn't go to go and buy <clears throat> whatever you needed to buy, right? And if you had an opportunity to buy what you needed to buy, you had to go buy the back the back window. You'll take my mm. money, but uh, I can't buy in the shop. I mm. understand, right? So, Spaza then created, Spaza meaning it's patapa, it's a small thing, it's a, it's a make-believe, right? Mm. So now we take it, because we are not allowed to go to town, the people who had permits then go and it became a, a nuisance. So Spaza, I mean in the Zulu language, some says it's Spaza, it's a, nu it's a nuisance, all right? So now you're trying to create this thing outside to bring it inside to serve the people, 
Mm. So that, because not everybody can go into town, not everybody has Udompas and all those other things that mm. you had to get at the time. That's how the taxi industry also then started in the sense that we need to transport ourselves from <laughs> here to there um, because we're not allowed to go in and we, we kind of need to make things work. Mm. So now go, come Mandela, Mandela comes out, all of those things. We then say, ah, let's continue around this thing. It doesn't really matter. We'll figure it out. But mm. we're not formalizing. We're not at the time we needed to look at these things is either within the era of Mandela or within the era of Mbeki to say the second, let's have a second Codesa to understand how do we involve what we have created, right? Mm. Because of this. So now that never happened. So the government now is like, oh, flip. So now we have the taxi industry that's bringing in a crap load of money. We have this, we have that. But if we embrace it, we don't know how to count it. Mm. <laughs> right? <laughs> so if you don't know how to count it, because we don't know how many taxi operators is there, we don't know. Because now between 94 and 2000 or 2010, we didn't have a discussion in terms of how do you bring it into the economy. Mm. And then now we just leave it and we feel, we'll figure it out. But now from a human perspective, and there's also the black emancipation and how our mental ability has been done, is that we haven't really embraced it ourselves as people. Because we just know mm. it's illegal. It's illegal because it hasn't changed, right? Our constitution hasn't changed. Um, it's still, we still refer to the 1976 Act of, because the mm. 1976 Act of says it's illegal to have a walker on the street. It is illegal to sell things in the street. The only place that's embraced is at a soccer match where PSL brings the mamas inside, right? Yeah because they understand what it is about. So there's acts that's making it um, illegal. <laughs> and we need, to, we, need to, we need to review those acts. So mm. you can't blame the cop because he's also acting according to what he needs. So the law, yeah. <laughs> like the law which needs to be, be changed, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> you're, you're not supposed to be here. What, what do you want here? <laughs> So there's yeah, a yeah. there's a serious conversation we need to have around how how we how we talk around township economy. No, actually, thanks thanks for that. I mean, um, that that brief history lesson. I think it's also very important for people to just understand because once you understand the history, you can understand why we actually act the 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 way we act right now. You know, um, so. I want to know. I mean, I've seen some articles. Certain retailers um, trying to extract value in the informal gasi gasinomics etc. You yeah. know, uh, we don't need to actually mention like the the names. And look, capitalism aside, because with capitalism, they are going to pursue all opportunities. Obviously, do you do? You, do you see them moving in like actually hurting the economy? And what I mean by that is they would um, remove the mom and pop store. I understand the value they will bring. They will probably bring in cheaper prices because they have economies of scale. But when you look at the bigger picture, how do you see that planning out um, when a certain retailer actually moves in? Mm. So, so quite interesting, right? So what interesting about... Um, so even, even in my space, if someone approached us to say, look, I want to sell um, fruit and veg into this plaza. Okay. And the first thing I asked was, okay, so do you understand the township economics? And do you understand this, the how one party talks to another party? The reason why you won't find an onion or a potato inside a spaza is because next door to the spaza is a person who's selling fruit and veg, mm. right? <laughs> and, the, and that's the environment is that, 
And next door to him is someone who's selling chips. You just mm-hmm. need to walk through LX and go to 15th Street and understand you'll find this guy is selling chips, this guy is selling potatoes, this guy is selling this one, this spaza is selling that. Inside the spaza, he's selling hair because he understands he needs to sell hair because the salon lady can't afford to stock hair. So he'll stock hair for her, right? And I think what corporates don't understand is what is the relationship within that environment that works? Mm. Um, and what is the the community aspect of it? So you as a big retailer, you come in and you want to put it somewhere. So first of all, you need to find space. Question is, where's, where are you going to get space? Because there is a relationship. It's an open economy. Mm. There is this guy who's selling from the spaza, but he's giving an income to the person who owns the house, right? Mm. And he's paying school fees for that person. So if you're a big retailer and you say, look, I'm going to put a container, you're going to find space for the container, one, right? Two, um, and show me where you can put a container in Alex. Uh, I don't know where. <laughs> good luck on that, yeah. <laughs> good, good luck on that, right? Um, there was one who put a container in Hamanskra. Um, and he put this container on the side of the street. But next door, or in the other street, was two two other spazas. Mm. That guy survived. The container came and survived. About, it was booming two weeks. People got excited. Then they realized, but wait a minute. There's, there's certain things I can't get from you. Right? So mm. this guy, this trader... He's been, he's been my trader or my spaza guy for two, 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 three years. So I can go in and I can have a tab. Because this is what happens. Mm. I can go in and say, hey, man, I haven't gotten paid. Just give me bread and bull bread or something. Mm. I'll pay you. I said, no, no problem, yeah, my friend. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> As a retailer, big, big corporate, you don't understand that relationship. You, you... So I think everybody's trying to go into this market because also the formal market, if you look at the numbers, between the next three, four years, will grow, growth rate is about two to three percent, whereas this market is between 12 and 15 percent. So everybody's trying to get into this market, but you don't understand what are the relationships within this market, right? Mm. Um, And until retailers understand that you can't just go in and do it yourself, how do you how do you involve the communities? And when when people come out, the first thing they ask in the township is, are you empowering the people who already have it, right? Are you mm-hmm. finding someone within the area and saying, okay, let's empower you to run this thing, or am I going to do it because I want to talk to my margin? Um, and we need to get away from, yes, there's big business and we want to grow, but true growth comes from growing the community because that's mm-hmm. the essence of what the township lifestyle is, is is the community working together to get a certain thing that's going. Um, that's why there's, there's community communities that if someone is is having an issue, the community will shut you up. Um, so I think that's where retailers are probably going to, uh, or big, big boys are going to struggle. Um, and in my opinion, I think they very far uh, from it um, because you're taking, and people understand that if I don't buy from Umama on this side, Umama needs this money because I know Utape, because Utape mm. knows it, right? Um, or they'll say, this guy is selling fruit and veg, and you saw during COVID that the people that was most hit was the ladies who were selling veggies, was the lady who was selling uh, maguena, was the lady who was doing that. Big corporate, doesn't really matter. It's just mm. like, fine, I can just mark up this and mark up that. So in my opinion, I think, um, no. Nah. <laughs> so,
<laughs> so just on that, I mean, do you do you ever see them succeeding? So say maybe, okay, cool. Let me understand the gastronomics. Let me go and speak to the people in in the township. Let me gather the trust. Let me empower the community. Well, do you see, and I've done all of those checkbox, 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 right? And obviously it's laborsome. Um, it takes a lot of work, relationship building, you know. Do you think then after that, that one can be well received um, as a big corporate, whether you're multinational yep. or you're a big retailer, you know? Look, I think, so an example is there is a specific FMCG retailer in uh, Venda. Mm. Venda? Yeah, Venda, right? Um, so what they've done is because Venda is is big in terms of um, vegetation, sure. early in the morning, they do not take things from wherever. So the person who has grown, um, let's say, cabbage, brings his cabbage in the morning to this guy. So this is the cabbage that I have, all right? Mm. And he buys from this guy and puts it in his store. Uh, it's, it's actually quite amazing to see. Well, then it's like it's like small little vehicles and buckies, and guys are bringing all their produce there. And this retailer goes and says, "Okay, yeah, no, that that mango looks cool. I'll take the truck, bring it in there, right?" Mm. And now he is embracing what the community is doing in terms of farming. The people within there knows that you have sold it in that specific retailer. And they go by it because they're supporting what you have embraced, what the community is doing. So I think the principle around it is corporate needs to think, how do I embrace community first before profits, right? Mm. Because we want to get profit at the, at the expense of and livelihood. Right. Mm. Um, and you need to, I think if, if they start thinking around how do we do that, then there's a place for them. Then there's a place of um, creating a symbiotic relationship. Um, and I mean, if you think of brands, people do all these brand activations and someone will say, no, I buy a specific brand because this brand has, has, has put water in the school. Mm. And that's why I support that brand because They've spoken to spoken to 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 the community. So that's where corporate needs to think. They need to think first: what's the purpose they want to drive? What is the impact into the community? And therefore, profits will then come. Mm. Um, I think that's the mindset they have to they have to drive. And and just on that, I mean, we've mentioned obviously understanding the community, putting community before before profits, um, before profits. Sorry. And yeah. um, just generally understanding the gastronomics, I just want to, my last point on this is, is there anything else that a big corporate, big retailer, who's an outsider, obviously, is naive about um, that you've seen in your experience uh, that maybe you didn't mention before uh, when trying to enter uh, um, the gastronomics, well, basically the township? Yeah, so look, I think big corporates are, naive in the sense that, and I think it's my pet hate, right? Um, even where I work, it's, 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 it's a bit of a pet hate. So I'll give you an example. So um, someone sets up a, a meeting with me yesterday because they want to do a connected spaza with some stuff, right? And yeah. the first slide on the presentation is a shack Right? It's Come on. Shack. In 2020, okay. <laughs> 2020, exactly. It's a shack branded with a, with a Coke sign. And like, we're going, we're going into spas. I'm like, that's your problem because you're talking about something you don't know. So you think that the black person inside this community is because they're poor, don't read, don't have aspirations, don't have this, don't have that. So you approach them in that way. Um, 
And and I think that's 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 the naivety of of of, of corporate in the sense that <coughs> the only corporate that does it really well is 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 beer, it's alcohol, right? Sure. Because they understand that as black people we're aspirational, right? Mm. We want to mm. go somewhere. You're not trying to dumb us down. Um, I'll give you an example. I, I went to the how train for the first time. It was a huge thing about how train, how train, how train, right? And I go into the how train and I was like, hmm, this is a this is a train. Mm. Right? <laughs> and um my Caucasian brothers were excited about this. Like, no, it's, it's a speech. I'm like, no, it's a train. Like, me, I went to Kimberley with a train. They just put in aircon here. Yeah. And then they asked us, yeah, but why don't you guys use the how train instead of driving your car? I'm like, my guy, <laughs> we've been working towards buying a car. And now you say, half my life I've been going, I've been in a train. Right, mm, mm, get from mm. point A to point B. Point B. And now I work, I have an opportunity to buy a car, and then you say, No, here's a train. I'm like, I've been in that train. I, mm. I want the train. <laughs> <laughs> I, want, I, want, I want a car. <laughs> you, you, all your life, when you turned 16 or 17, they gave you a car. So therefore, yeah. you're excited about this train. No, mm. I'm not. So there's this general thing around people in the township is, ah, let's make a small pack. Let's give them a two-rent pack here. Yeah, but why you gave me a two-rent pack? You, you, let's make a small soap or let's make a small, small this. There's a family of six. What am I going to do with a small piece of soap? The six of us. Mm. Economies of scale, right? And thank you for that. Um, so, I mean, you've mentioned, I mean, I was going to ask, beer done very well. Um, also, I think Coke has done it very well. But, yeah. I mean, they model, they've been working at this for the longest of times. I mean, even in East Asia, India, where, like, they go to the last mile. So, I mean, there are some big corporates that are actually doing it very well by understanding that. I just... Are there any other players, um, and they don't have to be big, that are actually doing very well in, in the informal markets, you know? Maybe if you can mention one or two uh, yeah. that are making inroads and doing very well, you know? So, for instance, I mean, just also a little bit about Coke. So, the Coke, so the reason why Coke is doing well, right, is, and this is something that people don't think, Coke, beer, why they've cornered the market is, 76 happened or apartheid happened, right? There was restrictions within the countries, within the specific country. Big mm. corporate left. Mm. Likes of Pepsi left. Likes of uh, PNG, they left, mm. right? Mm. And Coke remained, which means brand loyalty is number one. So they never left the country. They were mm. in there. They were delivering every day in the township years of Coke. There was billboards up of Coke. Sunlight. Why people, if you go, you don't call it washing powder. You call it sunlight. Sunlight, yeah. Right? Um, you don't call it toothpaste. You call it Colgate, right? Mm -hmm. um, you, you, you call it um, Eclairs, right? Because these are brands mm. that has never left and became household brands and people have associated themselves with that brand right because it's good likes of mm. oros right mm. um, and now what what is starting to happen within the township is no matter what these other brands are coming through there is the traditional brand that's always been within that township that's very hard to break that brand right mm. stay soft right Lots of other companies have tried to make another fab car. Yeah. But when you get to the store, Umtwana says, Mama says, go buy me Stay Soft. When he gets there, he says, can I have Stay Soft? Stay Soft, Doesn't yeah. matter what other brand is there, the guy's going to ask Stay Soft. Yeah. <laughs> because it became, <laughs> became a brand name. Mm. Um, 
actually, when I was young, they told me go buy. The lady wrote it down. She wrote, "Colgate Aqua Fresh." Fresh. <laughs> <laughs> and then I went and I bought a Colgate and an Aqua Fresh, and, 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 and she was upset. Like you wasted my money. I said you wrote Colgate Aqua Fresh. What was I supposed to do? <laughs> 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 so, so I think the brands that that's doing well is brands that that have purpose. So S and B have purpose. They've got they've got leadership that they're putting within the schools, uh, programs that they're running. Um, Unilever as a brand in terms of just sunlight, what sunlight is standing for. Um, obviously, there's Coke. There is um, Mac is 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 starting to understand the concept of community involvement. Mm. Um, but they're struggling in terms of that brand equity that the likes of your your satellites have. Um, other player that's that that's coming up quite 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 big is your 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 Kellogg's, right? Mm. Your, your Doodles. Um, so Kellogg's has gone and created these these hubs and they've painted stores, but besides painting a store, because that's what brands do these days, right? Go into a township and paint a store. Those like paints, yeah. This is paint a store. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, they they actually have promotions. They have guys that come in and educate the guys. Not the brand, Vodacom. Mm. Um, so Vodacom within they if you think about a painted store. Whoever started a painter store has been Vodacom and Coke, right? Mm. Um, and they're the ones, again, it's community involvement, is how do we help this guy to grow his business? Because I was actually having a conversation with someone this afternoon um, to say, respect the owner or the spaza or the mama because they're businessmen, mm. right? The same respect you give to a pick and pay and a shop right about promotions and whatever, and you won't go in there and just put up this big stuff. Um, mm. It's because these are business owners and they run businesses. There's some there's some traders who have five, six stores in different areas because, sure. and they'll tell you this is my brand. Um, mm. GSK is doing well with Grandpa. Um, so Grandpa is another, that's like a brand. <laughs> right. Yeah, Grandpa um, Panado. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, yeah. so those those words. So go go get me Grandpa again. It's just it's 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 a tablet, but Grandpa is the big thing. Um, so and again, it's brands that's been there that makes it very difficult for new players to come in. Sorry. Hey, young man. <laughs> What's up? <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Cheers, buddy. It's bedtime. <laughs> the school nights. <laughs> yeah, school nights. Yeah. So, so those are those are your brands. Yeah. Um. Fair enough. So. My last question, which in this question is a couple of sub questions, um, something you've spoken about uh, that we've also spoken about is about digitizing, right? The informal market. Yeah. Uh, which is, <laughs> I love how you laugh. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I, I want to speak about digitizing the informal market because yeah. obviously it's the it's the key word now it's where the world is moving etc you know like i want to know why is this important if it's important right uh challenges around this um but before i mean we get there so can we just start of like what exactly is digitizing right because it's actually a big encompassing word because yeah. it could be, might be IT infrastructure. It might be, okay, let me get a, a smartphone or let me, I mean, there's many, many ways always that advertising on social networks, you know? So what does digitizing in the informal market actually mean? So look, it's a, it's a, and it's the in word, right? It's the new, it's the mm, new thing. Yeah. You need to digitize, <laughs> you need to digitize. Um, I remember me. Someone, <laughs> yeah. someone put Wi-Fi, we're going to put Wi-Fi at the spaza and yeah, okay. 
okay, right? Um, <laughs> <coughs> so there is, if you want to, if you're digitizing this thing, right? So it's a bigger discussion. We need to we need to go back into what does it mean if you say you want to be digital, and what are the things that you need. So you and I, we where we're sitting right now, we're sitting in places where there's fiber, right? And mm. we can have Wi-Fi that's running and this is running and we have smart TVs and all those things mm. because we, we, we're probably living in areas that's digitized, but the mm. infrastructure has been laid to be it able enables, to, make, yeah. mm. to, to, to digitize, right? Um, so you go to, to, you go to an informal market uh, uh, and there's no even infrastructure mm. and you're talking around digitizing. <laughs> So, so <laughs> what's the infrastructure? Is there is there a line? Is is the there's cable theft? If it's cable theft, have you laid fiber? Have you done that? So there's the infrastructure question that we first need to answer. One. Um, there's the the question around an open economy. So if it's an open economy, there's questions, okay. Ooh, township is dangerous. We need to drive cashless. You know, we need to digitize it. We need to take money out. Mm. Um, again, do you understand the flow of money? Because uh, until the taxi driver okay. can take card, <laughs> <laughs> there's never going to be cashless. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because, <laughs> because who owns? That model, right, is the majority of that market is run by the taxi industry, right? And to digitize the taxi industry is a different conversation altogether mm. because he's saying yeah. to this guy, we want to want to track your money, right? Oh, really? Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like uh, wait, you want to do what? <laughs> do I, I don't even pay toll, e tolls, man. You want yeah. to? Oh no 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 right. <laughs> so 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 there's that aspect. Um, then so I mean just the digital, and then we're having those conversations of creating cashless hubs. Then there's the cost on data, yeah. right? <laughs> Which is another conversation to have because then the government is trying to have it. Is you're trying to put a smartphone into this guy and you're saying to him, you gotta. You can order on an app and you can put in the banking. And it's like, what's the, what's the data cost, right? Mm. Because you can't afford data. South Africa is one of the highest data, data countries. The likes of Ethiopia is the lowest, right? Mm. Um, why digital is booming in Nigeria is because data cost is not high in Nigeria. Mm. Uh, and Nigeria is, is, also I mean a market that, that thinks in that level, right? Um, we still have feature phones that that, 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 that we have, right? Um, there's traders who have two phones. He has a smartphone, he has a feature phone. And this smartphone, he, he switches off when he gets, because it's, I'll use my feature phone to get an SMS from the cash and carry, or I'll use my feature phone to call who, because if I put on my data, it's too expensive, mm. right? Um, so it's a bigger conversation before, before someone can say, no, we want to digitize this market and we want to put this in and we want to put connected screens in and you like, um, you want to put in a connected screen, right? Because you want to connect consumers and touch. Do you understand that people are striking because there's no electricity for 10, 10 10, 10, 20 days, mm. <laughs> and you want to put a digital screen for people to touch. <laughs> yeah. Right? <laughs> like, like, understand the economy and, and what are the, and there's a lot of challenges. There is opportunity, mm. obviously, because there's also um, bigger stores that understand, okay, there are people that are swiping. It's a bigger conversation. And we're having conversations with banks now to say, if you want to digitize, if you want to drive cashless in an area, you need to start not with the trader. You need to start 
with the consumer. Mm. Um, interesting thing is like Sasa cards, right? So everybody knows Sasa is big and you can swipe that Sasa card. You can literally mm. you can swipe it. You can be like a debit card and you can swipe yep. it and you can spend it, right? But the perception is if I keep money in here, the government's going to think I have money. <laughs> so let me draw it out mm. and keep the money. Okay, yeah. Because I can't just go in and then no, right? Um, so there's a bigger, there's a mindset change that needs to happen. There is, um, I mean, just my mom. My mom took a, keep saying, no, here's a smartphone. She bought her like three and she throw, gives it away. Eventually she's like, okay, okay, I've got it now, right? Got it. Yeah. <laughs> Because I said, no, if you if if I give you this phone, I can WhatsApp call you. Right? Mm. So when I WhatsApp call, it doesn't go through. Then I call her. I'm like, I'm trying to WhatsApp call you. She says, Never mind, I can do that, man. I don't. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, hmm. <laughs> now there's a <laughs> there's a there's a conversation that needs to have around it. Then there's the there's the millennials that's in there, right? Mm. And again, as much as the millennials are in there, those are the guys that might have bigger conversations. Say to the guy, hey, man, I've got this card. Can I swipe, right? Um, but also from that aspect, how do we enable those people to have those things? There's bank charges. There's this, there's that, there's that. Um, and if I have a digital phone, data is expensive. So even if I want to connect with you on wherever, it's expensive. That's why I have to, have to get a blesser to pay me data. Mm. So it's a it's a big, bigger discussion around we need to fix infrastructure. We need to have a conversation about service delivery within we need to fix that aspect. We need to and then we bring in and then digital will like slowly grow. Maybe with COVID it might move faster because okay. we understand that's where we're going, but it's a bigger conversation around it. Which is which is very interesting for me because, I mean, one of my questions was around collecting data, but I guess you need to have the infrastructure, build up the digital community before yeah. you can start to, I mean, collect data and then use that data, obviously, to benefit whoever's collecting it, you know. But yeah. I'm, as I'm going through this logic and questioning myself, I'm like, Digitizing the informal markets. I understand like the benefits when it can be cheaper if data is lower, you connected, etc. You know, but at the end of the day, who is it actually benefiting if you're digitizing the? <laughs> <laughs> like, why is there such a push to? What? Yeah. Let's have the screens and you know, like screens. Yeah, because again, again, it goes back to the point that we know this is this is where the economy is growing, right? This is where um, I got friends who work in Santon, but stay in Soweto, right? Mm. <laughs> because, I mean, Kivukas, right? Yeah. We've now gone back, we've built houses, we, we're happy to be in there. Um, but corporate is driving digital because they know they don't have information to your point. Data, mm. there's data, um, data is a big thing right now. Right, so there's data farming. Everybody wants to get data, um, and I sometimes question some of these numbers that we get. Um, some will say, "No, penetration in this market is so much based on the data." What what data? You went to read one or two cash and carries, and you say you know the data. All right, mm. um, it's because I think as as corporates and as people, we're driving da- di- digital. Because you're trying to understand this consumer, which is a good thing. You're trying to understand this consumer. Um, and I also sometimes ask myself, to your point, who said these people want to be digital? Mm. <laughs> who, who said so? Who, who says I want to have a screen that's in my face, right? Mm. Um, who, who says that I want to order online? What, what, and I mean, just ordering online. So one of the biggest questions I ask myself is, if there's a digital drive, 
Um, so there's lockdown, and lockdown then goes down. Says no, you can order food online. No one delivers cookers. Mm. So, 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 so you want to drive digital and say order online, but you don't want to go and deliver there because you're scared. Mm. Mm. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean. I'm sorry I'm mentioning, but for instance, some I know someone who stays in Lanasia. Lanasia is an Indian community, but mm. Uber doesn't go there. Uber Foods don't go there. And I'm like, but you're driving this digital drive and you want people to be online, but you don't want to go in there. <laughs> but it's I'm sure the the Uber as a company goes there, like you can get dropped off, you know, or maybe picked up. I'll probably have to do my research. But it's funny how you mentioned that they don't do food delivery. Uber foods, no, Uber foods don't go there. Uh, like no, we, we don't deliver there, right? Yeah. Um, I know that in in Mamelodi, there's there's no Uber that goes there, mm. right? Take you to Pretoria East, and then sorry, we can't mm. to Pretoria. Yeah, right. Sure. <laughs> so, so as much as you 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 want as much as you want to digitize, you you gotta be sh- sure. So someone has to take a taxi to the corner of Mamilodi Drive where the where Pretoria East starts, and then call an Uber from there. Mm. Right? So, so, so you you want me to be digital, but you don't want to enable me through it, right? So. So I think those are also the conversations we need to we need to have in terms of if you're going to say you want to be digital, what are the information and are you willing to go there? Are you willing to drive, be bold enough to be able to go in, be bold enough to say we are ready? Where it is working is um, so there are some stores and again with 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 COVID and obviously it happens in Soweto and I think there's. Same guys doing it in Atrich, is it or Shoshangobe? Mm-hmm. Food delivery guys, right? So they've now, so your likes of so to them, there's Boost, Patro, and all those guys. There are there are up and coming delivery companies within the township mm. that are now coming up, but their digital is is WhatsApp or it's um, SMS, right? Yeah, because they enable and they understand the the the, the company so or, or or the traders is order through if you want a meal order send me WhatsApp and I'll come deliver yeah. it to you. Mm. So it's digital, right? Because is it's not fancy and it's not an app and it's not this, mm. but they he understands how to engage with the, with 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 his with his um with his consumer. <clears throat> so I think what is coming up is. Entrepreneurs within the the townships are realizing, okay, if the corporate can do it in at that level, because you know we like to be fancy as corporate, right? Yeah. <laughs> I can just like um, send me an SMS. Here's an SMS. Yeah. What you want, and I'll come and deliver it to you, and I'll take yeah. the cash. You don't need to tap. <laughs> you don't need to swipe. <laughs> you need the cash. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> I put some sanitizer on the money. And I'm fine. <laughs> yeah. Right. So that is also digital, right? Mm. But we also have to redefine what digital means to 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 us. Is is digital? Does digital mean an app based something? Does digital mean that you need to be able to log onto the specific um, Play Store and download this thing? Yeah. But it's happening within, right? Because people are ordering things. Um, there are certain places that I know that you can order the bev inside the township. You know, mm. this is how it happens. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, no, no, Richard, look, I think you can, for me, because I'm very uh, respectful of your time as well, because, I mean, there's many other questions I have around route to market, also in the informal market, which uh, we can do another time you know um because it's such it's such a big topic um i wanted yeah so i mean thank you for sharing the knowledge and uh and also yeah (laughs) your stories are very 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 interesting you know 
and uh, your insights and the knowledge that you have in this market. I would love to just close off with um, five questions, just getting to know you. So as I said earlier, it's more of tradition on, on, on the show where we just get to know our guests by asking it's not really deep questions. Sometimes it can get deep, but, um, you know, um, we just get to know you to see what's under your hood and what drives you, you know. Uh, so, yeah, uh, when fine, let me just actually get straight into it. It's five questions. Let me start with the first one. So, Richard, by the way, you, I think you're the only person I know who has actually more energy than me, you know. <laughs> I don't know. How, every day, you're just like, I'm like, God damn, I need to keep up. But uh, in saying that, not to even lead you on, like, what would you say is your superpower? Um, I think my superpower is, hmm, it's a good one. Um, people, right? I think, I, I think I connect with people, mm. right? Because um, we all in our in our minds, and I have this thing in my head that. We all have issues every single day. Every yeah. single one of us, we wake up with issues and stress and whatever. And my philosophy is always, if I can make, if I can touch one person for that day, if I can make one person smile, if I can make one person feel that life is not that bad, you know, even mm. if it's just one second, right? Mm. And that's what motivates me. It's, it's, it's because we we also inside we're like oh is, I'm just like you know let's we all have issues if I can make you smile for five seconds then yeah. I'm done then, then we're good and we move on and 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 I think I I picked it up from probably from I mean I'm colored so we talk a lot of crap um, <laughs> but it's it's and that's what energizes me right people mm. people energize me and. When I see another person, I always want to ask myself, there must be something interesting about this person. There must be something mm. cool. Um, why are you down? And you smile mm. and and you move on and you you and you find. So that's what energizes yeah. me. And I think my my connection to people and the fact that I think that each one of us has something fundamental and something amazing, you know, and if I can mm. touch it, why not? Yeah. Well, I like that. Huh? What's one story you believed in when you were younger, the young, <laughs> the young Richard, that you don't <laughs> actually anymore? <laughs> <laughs> What's the one story I believed in? Um, oh, my parents said they're coming back now, now. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, so my parents are from. My mom is from a, a small town called Warrington. And I think, because my stepdad, I think they just got to marry, right? Secretly, somewhere in yeah. somewhere, right? And they're like, no, we're going to Arrington. We're going to visit family. I'm like, oh, okay, cool, great. And then they parked. They sent me to my aunt. They said, no, go to your aunt. We're just going here. We're coming now, now. <laughs> and they were gone for four days. I'm like, these buggers. <laughs> Think they went on honeymoon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> where where are you? I believe that's the I really believe that they would come back. Um mm. but they didn't come back. But eventually four days later they did okay. come back. So I believe that story. I never believed in Santa Claus because there was no such thing for the Christmas. My mother okay. told me, hey look here I bought you this thing. Hey it's from me. <laughs> hey. <laughs> um so I mean, speaking of, of, of townships um, or informal market, actually, it doesn't have to be in the township. It uh, brings me to my next question, you know. Um, if you could have, and it actually ties back into the why and what drives you, et cetera, you know, but if you could have one massive billboard, whether it's in the township or on the M1 or, you know, in Santin or whatever, right, what yeah. would that billboard say? Um... I think it will say, um, do you, right? So, and I think 
I had to learn that the hard way because mm-hmm. I'm a very, to your point, I'm a very outspoken, bubbly type of person. Well, I don't like this bubbly word. It sounds like uh, date my family. I'm bubbly. <laughs> I want a bubbly person. I'm a very outspoken, out there type of person, right? So yeah. you then meet corporate. So Richard comes and is this thing, you meet corporate. And within corporate, you question, you ask things, you do that. And they say, listen, this is not at work, eh? It doesn't work like this here. Um, you must be... There's a corporate you and there is a home you. And those two people must not be together. And I was like, what? Okay, all right. Because you knew you want to navigate and you want to get somewhere. Um, move from that company to another company. It was the same thing. And it was the most miserable time of my life because I felt I wasn't myself. Mm. All in the name of trying to become something within this big pool, right? Until I realized that, look, yeah, I am authentically me. And if you can't accept who I am and how I speak, if I speak aloud, if I speak soft, if I speak bad English, right English, if I dress a certain way, this is who I am, mm. right? So, um, and when I realized that, that's when when life was starting to be great because I didn't need to, I could sleep at night knowing that I was myself. Mm. Um, and you would know in the office, I would make a noise, I'm like, shh, I'm like, shh, and you too. <laughs> 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 yeah. Right? Because I realized this is, this is authentically me. So I think my billboard will either be, and not big words, authentically you, it's just be you, man. Just Do be you. Who, Do you who you want to be and do who you want to do, right? And everything else will fall in line because if you are aligned with who you are, people must meet you. I'm not saying be ah, be crazy, but you, you need to be aligned in terms of who you are. Don't change yourself. Don't change your true character, your true being, just to fit in. That, that's, mm-hmm. what, that's what I would say, yeah. Um, so, Fred, so look, I think, thank you again uh, for, for that. Um, to end off, you know, um, I'd love to know how would you love to be remembered? Um, your legacy, however you want to interpret the, the question, but the mark you want to leave on the world, you know, at the end. I think the mark for me is. It's how did I touch you, right? So, again, it goes back to my point is I don't want to be remembered that I had the most money or whatever. I want, because I asked myself this question quite regularly. So, even last year, my my stepdad passed. You know, funerals remind you about these things. Mm. And I always ask myself that what will people say about me, right? Um... How did I touch that person? And for me, it's not about what I did. It's about how did you feel when I left you? Mm -hmm. Um, And did I make you feel a better person? Did I make you feel that no matter how bad the world is, there's hope, right? Um, did I make you feel that, because my philosophy always is, all I have to do is be better than yesterday. I don't need mm. to be better than, what I, I just need to be better than yesterday, right? And if I've made you feel that you can be better, you can do better, you can, there is so many issues in our lives. And after you've met me, even if I meet you once, in the lift or at a, and I love doing it. I mean, if I'm go to a, if I'm at a teller, mm. my wife hates it, right? She hates it. It's just one of those things. <laughs> um, is that 
I must talk to you because sometimes the most unimportant people are the most important most people. Important. Yeah. <laughs> right? The security guard is the most important person because if he decides he's not opening this gate, you're not getting in. It's not the CEO. <laughs> it's not who it's it's this security guard, right? Um if and, 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 and I sometimes do it with interviews that I would go ask the the receptionist, how did that person treat you? Mm. How did you find that person? Because if you can't treat the receptionist right, then, sorry, man, <laughs> you, you know, it um, mm. doesn't matter how great you are because we are people. We, are, we, 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 are, we come from people. We, we, we live in people and we experience people. And for me, that's, that's, that's the biggest thing is that when you, when you experience riches, how did it make you feel? Did it make you feel crappy? Did it make you feel like, hey, you know, life's not mm. that bad? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and and that's what I that's what I want to be remembered for. Richard, uh, that is a lovely way to end. And I will tell you right now, you have made me feel good. I have enjoyed this interview. Thank you <laughs> <laughs> for for taking the time. I know I know you didn't get the chance to put your kids to bed, uh, so. I need to make it up to them, you know. Uh, I'm sure they want a daddy. <laughs> but uh, no, thank you very much. Uh, you've really actually uh, educated me. I've learned a lot actually about route to market as well. Because I mean, there's you have these ideas in your head in terms of townships or whatever. But just taking the time to understand gastronomics, um, I appreciate the insight you've given. And I'm sure whoever listens to this, whether it's one or two or three people, they will actually find this actually quite valuable. And thank you also for sharing a piece of yourself, you know, uh, <laughs> and uh, allowing yourself to be vulnerable on the show. I really appreciate it. And continue to actually light up the dark, man, and uh, make it dense in this universe and bring this energy that we all need. Yeah. No, thanks, man. Thanks for inviting me. It was really fun. It was really, really good. <laughs> <laughs> thanks um, a lot. Appreciate it. Let me... Let me...